people that
As you're getting a little wet out there, let's sing Blessed Be Your Name.
Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious
October 2nd, Fall Family Fun Festival, uh, off on October 1 to 3, there will be a big food contest. What is that again? Is it Halloween? Yeah. 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 Off on October 2nd. Uh, bounce houses, that's Torah. Uh, Torah and worship. Uh, I think, yeah, I don't think it made it to the last day. I don't know that, but yeah, bounce fun stuff. Uh, we'll still be looking for uh, help with that. People are, you know, they're tired. more information. Then uh, October 8th, which is right next Saturday, the Friday of Fire, which is a work day here, starting at 9 a.m. We'll be doing some work in the, what they call the Tree Line over there. Uh, it's right next to Cosmic Books, so it's also a Bible study. Oh, yeah, that's right around the corner there on October 8th for for work day. And lastly, uh, all these announcements you can find on the bulletin that's uh, below. Uh, 
bridge program will be starting this Thursday from 6.30 to 7.30. And we'll run every other Thursday uh, for 6th grade through 7th grade. So this is a... Uh, Fifth to seventh graders, don't miss this. Thursday, 6.30 to 7.30, and every other Thursday. Uh, the bridge program is, uh, uh, that's what it says, it's a bridge from the fifth grade to the youth group. But there's kids in between, and we're not trying to lose our focus of that. It's, it's uh, an opportunity to, to spend time with them and uh, continue to, to uh, build them up um, through the love of God and for that on Thursday. here there's a basket on the pole here if you have a gift you can give your gift if you don't that's quite all right um, we'll have a short time of greeting say hi to somebody kids will go inside and then we'll have a message from pastor bruce uh, father thank you we thank you for the next generation lord we pray that we would have an understanding of just how important it is to instill values into these kids we pray for them. We pray that you would protect their, their minds and their eyes and their souls. We pray that you would uh, fill them with your love. We pray that they would come to know you, put their trust in you, and follow after you. Help us to help them, Lord, we pray. Uh, we thank you for this offering time. We thank you for the gifts. We pray that you'd use these gifts to further your kingdom. We thank you for those who give. And we just say, have your way. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Greet somebody.
going to get it out for him. Those waters are untapped, right? That's what it looks like. Okay. Good morning. Why am I? Uh, I'm always pleasantly surprised at the people that come out and bundle up <laughs> and put their umbrellas up. Uh, I don't know why that blesses me so much. Um, probably the reason it blesses me because I don't want to be here by myself. <laughs> But I'm glad you're all here. Uh, it's, it, it is a nice day, really. Um, I'm moving around a bit, so I know some of you. There are, uh, in that tub up there, there's some fleece throws. There's also umbrellas. Um, so, yeah, help yourself. Um, that's one of the benefits of having a uh, thrift store next door. Uh, so please, please make use of a throw if you'd like. <coughs> Um, I think as I think Jim might have said that uh, we have made a decision that next week we're going to be indoors. Um, we kind of have to pull the pl pull the trigger on that at some point so our team can officially move stuff upstairs and have time to accomplish that. Um, and it seems like now is we're getting there. We're getting close. Um, but it has been wonderful. I think this is our 14th Sunday outdoors this summer, and so. Uh, God has been faithful. Peter and Ingrid have been praying 
They're in Germany. I hope they have good weather there uh, today. But um, it's, it has been a blessing, and it's been a, a really great thing. And as I said, it's wonderful to see everybody come out and uh, participate in spite of the weather. Uh, so one thing I'm going to say is... <laughs> So next week is the Family Fall Fun Festival. I know that um, Jim said that. There's a sign-up over here. Now, we still need a few more people to sign up. Like, I think there's only one team for the Scarecrow race. So they're going to win, right, if there's only one team. So, <laughs> so <laughs> and it's the Todd Brian's team. So, uh, so there's more things that we're going to have the bounce house. We're going to need some help. We're going to have the bounce house out. We're going to have some games. We're going to have pies, um, chili, and I think if Gordon, uh, Gordon and Julie, by the way, they're home with their new baby boy, William Gordon Jones. We got to stop and see them yesterday, and that was wonderful. But Gordy was uh, also talking about cooking hot dogs uh, to go with the chili. So we're trying to keep it simple but fun. So the idea will be We'll worship upstairs. We'll come out and have our Family Fall Fun Festival out here. Once again, the sign-ups over there. This is what I noticed. It's in the proximity of the people that sit over here. So they're all signing up. So that means you guys got to go over there <laughs> to sign up. So anyways, that'll be fun next week. Um, so last week, we, we talked... Uh, about from Timothy, fight the good fight. Um, you know, and sometimes we, in our Christian walk, we have to be, uh, we have to shake ourselves a little bit and remember that we're in a fight. <laughs> that, you know, uh, I used to hear someone say, you, know, you, you don't get to where you, you're going in God, you don't accomplish what God is uh, wanting to do in your life and the mission of, of the gospel by chewing bubble gum and looking out the window, <laughs> right? You, you're, you're, you're engaged. And so sometimes we need to be uh, reminded of that. And that's what Paul was doing to Timothy, uh, reminding him, of course, all through his pastoral epistles to Timothy, he encouraged him to uh, stir up the gift, fight the good fight, hold fast. Um, and, the, and the realization is, is that there's, there's a fight that we're in. There's a battle, and that battle is to rob us of our confession. And our confession is Jesus Christ. Our confession is Jesus was the Son of God. He came to earth in the flesh. He died on the cross for our sins, and he rose again on the third day for our justification. That's our confession. That's all you need. I'll say it again. That's all you need. <laughs> You know, we add a lot, right, over the years. But when the early church in the book of Acts was going around and they were uh, talking about this amazing thing that happened with the Messiah, that he rose from the dead and the things that he taught, they didn't have all the books to teach from that we do. They didn't have Timothy that we're teaching from today. <laughs> they were proclaiming Christ and him crucified. That's what they were proclaiming. And it changed the world. It turned the world upside down. So Paul, when he says to Timothy, fight the good fight. He's saying, fight the fight to hang on to that proclamation of who Christ is and what he did and what it means to us as humans in this world that we live in. So this is, um, this is where the enemy wants to trip us up. What we have to fight for is clarity about what we actually believe and what is truly important in our Christian walk. Because there's lots of muddy things that want to come in. There's lots of things that want to uh, come in and teachings. And, and this is what Paul, just above this, he's talking about teachers who come in with, with uh, strange teachings uh, about knowledge and all these various things. I'm probably getting ahead of myself, but that's okay. If I get too far ahead, we'll get done early. <laughs> um, it's a funny thing about... Uh, we want to add something to Jesus quite a bit. Did you ever notice that? We want to add something to Christ. Now, I'm all for teaching. I'm all for the doctrines of the church and different patterns of church worship and all of these things. 
But we have to be careful that what we're not doing is saying, well, yeah, Jesus, Son of God, died for my sins, rose again. That's really important, but let me tell you about what I really believe. Let me tell you about the doctrine that's really important to me. And those things can become more important than the confession of faith. And so Paul's saying, fight to maintain that confession about Christ. Okay. So he says fight, and faith is a fight, one that continues throughout our journey on this earth. Paul, uh, as he got to the end of his, his, uh, his walk with Christ, he was sharing with Timothy, he says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the course. I have kept the faith. In other words, I didn't go down any rabbit trails. <laughs> I stuck true to what God revealed to me and what he told me to deliver to you. I've kept the good, I've fought the fight and I've kept the course. And Paul is telling Timothy here, this is where the true battle is. Um, so it's a fight. And then he says, uh, we looked at, this is a little bit of review from last week. He says to Timothy, take hold of eternal life. Take hold of that eternal life which you confessed. And I'll just kind of put this back out there real quick. Jesus himself is eternal life. In the, he who has the Son has life. So if we're taking hold of eternal life, that means Christ is first and foremost. He is the one who I cling to. He's the. Speaking of which, do we have communion today? <laughs> Can somebody check? I don't know. I, I totally lost track of it. I thought we were. Um, <laughs> you know why? Sue's not here. Uh, uh, so, and it, so where was I? <laughs> he said, lay hold of eternal life. Because if you have Christ, the place where eternal life dwells is in Jesus Christ. In him was life, and that life was the light of men. And so that's why Paul is telling Timothy, this confession of faith about who Christ is, is of the utmost importance, and you need to fight for that. Lay hold on eternal life. Okay, today I'm going to bop down in the same chapter of 1 Timothy. Uh, <clears throat> this 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse 20. So once again, it's a warning um, from Paul to Timothy. And he talks about various things in this last chapter. The two main things he seems to talk about is false teachers and money mixed in with these warnings. Um, but this is really a charge right at the end of this, this letter that Paul wrote to Timothy. Um, I'll begin in verse 20 of 1 Timothy chapter 6, it says, O Timothy, guard the deposit entrusted to you. Avoid the irreverent babble and contradiction of what is falsely called knowledge. For by professing it, some have swerved from the faith. And then he ends it with, grace be with you. Uh, Timothy uh, Paul's saying, guard that deposit uh, that, that was in you. We, we know that uh, earlier in the first chapter of 1 Timothy, Paul, I already shared a little bit, Paul talked to Timothy about prophecies that went before on his life. He said, don't forget those prophecies and the gifts that are in you through the laying out of my hand. Stir those up, those things that were deposited into your life. Stir those things up so that by them you might war a good warfare. In other words, God has deposited things in your life and in my life that enable us to fight the good fight of faith. But we have to stir them up. And so Paul is saying this to Timothy throughout this book, but here he says, guard the deposit. Boy, that really echoed. Guard. <laughs> my friend told me last Sunday he was riding a mountain bike over here and he heard us. Patrick! Come here. Uh, <laughs> anyways. 
He's a good friend. We have, we've always, he always, he always says, uh, you know, we talk about church often. He says, well, I go to the church of the Blue Dome. And I said, that's what we're doing, Pat. <laughs> we're out here. Hello. Anyways, <laughs> guard that deposit. You know, Paul said that to Timothy um, in, in chapter 2. He says, follow the pattern of sound words that you have heard from me in the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus by the Holy Spirit who dwells within us. Guard the good deposit entrusted to you. Paul says, uh, let's just, let me just back up for a minute. So what, what was deposited? The truth about Christ. The life of Christ was deposited into Timothy. It was a gift that God gave through faith, through an understanding who Christ was. And he put his, you put our faith in Christ, and there's a deposit put in your life. Remember, Paul said that we carry this treasure. What treasure? The treasure of Christ, the treasure of heaven in earthly vessels. Picture that deposit in your life now, folks. <laughs> Picture it. Revel in it, rejoice in it, and Paul says, guard it. It was entrusted to you. It was entrusted to me. Sometimes we miss how much was entrusted to us through the gospel of Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ. That you and I, in our frailty and our weakness, he has deposited his goodness into our lives. The culture-changing, life-changing message that has been entrusted to us. This is the nature of the gospel. Those who experience and are touched and transformed through faith in Christ are now entrusted with its message. Isn't that amazing? Not just Bruce, but those who have experienced and been touched and transformed through faith in Christ, you now are entrusted with a message. I guess for me, um, I'll just read something here. This is something that one of the early church fathers wrote about this deposit. He says, that which is committed to you, not that which is invented by you. You see the difference? <laughs> well, this is the message I want to share. <laughs> The message that's committed is the message of Christ. Look to Him and live. That's what's been entrusted to us. So it's not, the, it's not the message which we invented. It's the deposit which you have received, not that which you have devised. It's not a thing of your wit, but of your learning. It's not a thing of private assumption, but a public teaching. It's not a thing brought forth from you, but a thing brought to you. You are not its author, but its keeper. You are not its leader, but a follower. That's what was entrusted to us. That's the deposit of the gospel. We've been entrusted with such a beautiful and glorious and wondrous thing. And a thirsty world is around us. And Paul says to Timothy, guard that deposit. Hang on to it. You know, it's kind of like if somebody, if you knew somebody and they were uh, passing on and they had something that they a valued treasure and family heirloom that they were going to pass on to someone, right? And they say, Bruce, take this. Pass it on to so-and-so. And Bruce didn't take care to do that, right? We're entrusted. We're entrusted with this gospel. We're entrusted with this life-changing message. I, uh, <clears throat> we talk about this reasonably often because I guess there's a younger generation. You're entrusted with something. I'm entrusted, yes, but it keeps getting passed on. There's, a, there's, a, there's something, there's a deposit of faith, there's a deposit of who Christ is that each one of us are called to carry and to pass on and to guard that deposit. You know, Paul said about Timothy in Timothy chapter 2, 
He says, Timothy, I'm reminded of your sincere faith, a faith that dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice, and now I am sure dwells in you as well. For this reason, I remind you to fan into the flame of God, flame the gift of God, which is in you through the laying on of my hands. It's been entrusted. Um, can you think of someone who faithfully took that deposit and relayed it to you? Maybe, maybe you just heard a message. Maybe it was even, you know, a, a Billy Graham appeal. But there's also others in our life that have that deposit that have ministered that over the years into our lives and into our patterns of thinking and into who we are. And then we're called, we're entrusted with that deposit to share it with others. Does that put any more... I hope it puts a little burden on us. <laughs> it does me. It says I'm entrusted with something. I have something rich and valuable that I'm called to carry to the next generation, a generation that needs to hear it. Guard it. And Paul, that's what Paul was telling Timothy. Timothy, you need to guard that deposit. I'm going to go back up. Yes. Guard the deposit entrusted to you. Do you know much of the kingdom of God is um, uh, this idea of a deposit <laughs> is there? You know, um, you have the parable of the uh, talents where a king was there and he gave talents unto, unto his servants. He gave five, one, two to another. I'm not giving the numbers exactly right. And he went off and he said, uh, uh, he went off and he came back and he was expecting that the deposits, <laughs> the talents, the things that God had put, uh, the king had put in their lives, there was going to be fruit. There's a deposit of heaven that's been imparted to us and we're called to guard it and to invest it. To invest in the good fight of faith. I'll just finish with that little parable. <laughs> a few of them deposited. A few of them, few of them took the talents and put them to work. But the one unprofitable servant said, well, I took the one talent that you gave me. It wasn't much. It was small. So I took it and I hid it. <laughs> so I'll have it when he comes back. The implication is there's an expectation that if there's a deposit that it goes into the marketplace. If there's a wonderful deposit of God's grace in our lives, it goes back to the marketplace. And let me just say this. I know you may be, you know, you might say, well, yeah, but I don't know what my deposit is. I don't know really, you know, what I would do or how it... It doesn't matter. It might be something very small. You might feel... as just as that servant felt, well, I just had one, so I figured I'd better keep it safe. <laughs> but if you invest in just a small way, I can promise you there's returns. There's spiritual returns when you invest what God has deposited in your life to others. Just try it. Everybody raise your hand if you're going to try it. And you'll see fruit. Okay, that's enough about investing. I was going to bring Matt into the picture here. But but Paul is telling Timothy, you've got something good. Guard that. Because things, and this is, so I better keep going. This is supposed to be a short message because, uh, was there communion? Oh, okay, good. All right, we're on target. So we won't go too much longer here. Guard that which is committed to you. Uh, fight the good fight of faith. What you have is rich. What you have is powerful. What you have is life-changing. What you have is supposed to be in the marketplace. It's supposed to be out there. Okay. We'll keep going. So then what he says, he says, guard the deposit. And then he says, avoid irreverent. I'm just going to go through this kind of quick. This is his, his last statement here. Guard the deposit and avoid irreverent babble. 
and contradictions of what is falsely called knowledge. Basically, he's saying, uh, some versions say avoid, instead of irreverent, they say avoid worldly chatter and talk of things that are falsely called knowledge. And there's so much we could say about this, but, and I already kind of talked about it a little bit at the beginning. There's something in us that always wants greater knowledge. Oh, yeah, yeah. I know where you're at with Jesus, but I'm a little deeper. I'm over here, and we're studying, you know, and I don't want to pick at anything, so I have to be careful. (laughs) The most important thing to know in the fullness of who he is, in the fullness of his power, his might, and his majesty, is Jesus himself. Not teachings. Avoid it. There's sometimes, and I'll, I'll just say, sometimes I'll just throw this one out there because I've done it before I've, if I get in trouble. Sometimes end time teachings distract people from living for Christ. It becomes this fascination. It becomes this absorbed world where we live and there's excitement in it, but it's not what brings life. And I think that's the type of thing he says, avoid teachings of so-called knowledge some things we'll never know that people speculate about but we can always know jesus better interestingly enough just in between these two two charges to timothy paul gives a doxology about god and christ and you know the one who i'm not going to be able to read it uh who lives in immortality the only one who is immortal uh he dwells in inapproachable light He's the mighty God of mighty gods. We need to know him more. And sometimes I think what he's saying is certain teachings, they they appeal to something in us, but they're not really revealing Christ. So he says, guard the deposit, and I'm going to keep moving. Guard the deposit. Avoid irreverent or worldly chatter with things that are falsely called knowledge. Sometimes we pursue things that in the end of it don't mean a whole lot to what it means to know Christ and Christ crucified. And Paul says, so why should we avoid this? Because some professing this so-called knowledge have swerved from the faith. Paul has a heart. He he, He said, stay true, Timothy. There's many things that want to pull you this way and pull you that way. There's modern teachings that want to take away the exclusivity of Christ. In other words, Jesus is the only way, still is the only way. (laughs) Don't Don't be sidetracked by things that would say there's some other path. The confession of our faith is Jesus. The confession of our faith is Christ is the Son of God who died and He rose again on the third day and now He's seated at the right hand of the Father. That is the gospel. That is where life comes from. There's things that want to pull us and start to say, well, you know, there must be other options. Paul says to Timothy, avoid, guard the deposit. Avoid the irreverent things that are so-called knowledge. Because, you know, the ones who tell you there's other ways, they're highly educated sometimes. If you look into the reasons for the exclusivity of Christ, people would say, well, it just doesn't seem fair. It doesn't seem... Everybody excludes somebody. And the gospel of Jesus Christ is the most inclusive, exclusive group that you could ever find. (laughs) Whosoever will may come. God is doing his work, has done his work. The deposit that we have is the message of Christ. Okay, I said this was going to go fast, didn't I? So avoid. Why do we avoid? Because some teaching ultimately leads us away from our profession of Christ. Before you know it, we've gone down a path and we've developed, you know, Anyways, I won't go any more on that. (laughs) Um, And then Paul finishes with, grace be with you. And the commentators say when he used the word you, it wasn't just a Timothy, it was a plural. And the the implication is, is that he meant for this letter to be read to the churches and to be read here in Saranac Lake. 
in uh, 2022, if I can remember the date. Um, Grace be with you. I love how he ends it with that because the message of the gospel is nothing comes according to our own effort. It only comes because of our confession of faith in Jesus Christ. For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Aren't you happy that none of us can boast this morning? That's great. I can't boast. I can boast in Christ. None of us have anything on any, anybody else. Grace be unto you. Hold the deposit. What is the deposit? That everything good, anything hopeful, anything that will bring you satisfaction, anything that will bring you life, anything that will bring you security is found in Jesus Christ. That's our confession. And that's what Paul is telling Timothy to guard, to stand for, to keep it. Don't be pulled aside. Don't be pulled this way or distracted that way. But keep your faith completely in Christ. Because this is a message of grace. An unmerited favor. Can we have a worship team come? Um, that, I, I use that word unmerited favor, and that is the, uh, one of the descriptors for the word grace. Uh, in other words, it's something that God gives, not something that we earned. Isn't that amazing? I love the, the, the parable of the, and I don't know the title of the parable sometimes, but where the, 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 the uh, maybe it was a vineyard owner who had hire, hiring people throughout the day, and he hired uh, all day long, and he got to the end of the day, and he was hiring those at the end of the day for the same amount that he hired the people that were working the full day. And they said, wait a minute. This is unjust. This is unfair. I've been here eight hours, and that guy comes at seven, hour, seven and a half hours, and you gave him the same pay as me. And the message in the middle of that is, in the gospel... The only one who's truly earned his pay, the one who, only one who has truly earned and paid the way is Christ. We are all equally needy. He is the provision. He's the one who has paid the price for all of us. Um, let's stand together. Can we bring the communion over this way, guys? And then I think it's, uh, there's something uh, nice about breaking bread outdoors. <laughs> Um, <clears throat> if we can get four, four guys, one more guy, so we have two with bread and two with juice, that'd be great. Okay, let's just, uh, I want to close our, I want to pray before we receive communion. <clears throat> um, come on right over, fellas. One on either side. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> um, communion is what we're talking about. It's, it's, it's what we understand about the grace of God, um, that the work that is done, the price that was paid for our righteousness was all Christ. And so when we break bread, we, we break bread with the understanding that I have trusted Christ. And I find my, he is my resource. He is my hope. He's the place where my righteousness comes from. And there's not a bit of effort on my own that comes into the picture. And so he gave us this model of breaking bread. The church has done it for thousands of years. And the expression is, 
It's not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but it's according to his mercy. Jesus broke bread that night and he said, this is my body, which is broken for you. And then he took the cup and he said, this is the cup, the new cup of the covenant in my blood given for you. And he asked us to continue to do this as a remembrance of his work on the cross. And a reminder to us that it's not my effort, it's not your effort, but it's what he did. So I just want to, let's just close our eyes for a minute, and I just want to pray that every person here would understand and kind of, Lord, that we would have a fresh vision of your goodness, of your grace, of your provision. Lord, that as we come today to partake, as you've asked us to do, we come with faith in our hearts, saying, Jesus, you paid it all. all. It's all to you we owe. Sin had left a crimson stain, but you wash it white as snow. It's according to your mercy. Lord, I pray for each one this morning that it can reach to you in faith, reach to you for forgiveness, reach to you for mercy, for wholeness, for spiritual power. That deposit that's within us is Christ. And we rejoice in it. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. Please come. Uh, come and partake. And I think... Bring your bread and juice back. We'll partake together after everybody has their... Stand
Something beautiful out of me. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we trust you, Lord. You do give us beauty for ashes. You give us hope where there is none. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. partake of the bread if you haven't yet. Lord, we thank you for your broken body. It was broken for us so that we can be whole. We rejoice in thanksgiving for your gift to us. Lord, we thank you for the new covenant in your blood, covenant of grace that brings forgiveness, brings mercy, brings us into your throne room. We thank you for it, and we partake with thanksgiving. What's the deposit that's in you? It's Christ in you. When we partake of communion, it's an indication. We're partakers together of that one bread. Christ in us, the hope of glory. He's given us deposit together. Can we sing Climb That Mountain just before we go? So let's just worship just a bit. Thank Him for His deposit of grace in your life. Rejoice. Communion is a time of thanksgiving. And then we'll close in prayer. We will have a prayer time after here. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. I will climb this mountain with my hands wide open. you'll make something beautiful out of me Lord as we go 
we treasure that deposit that's within us. The deposit of Christ, eternal life. Let us walk in it. Let us guard it. But also, also let us invest it everywhere we go. We thank you for your investment in us. And we walk in thanksgiving. We pray in Christ's name. Amen. As Paul said, grace be unto you. We'd love to pray with you up here. We could have some prayer teams come up, but we'd love to pray just behind the banner here. If anybody like prayer for any reason, uh, please come.